Good morning, welcome to Morning Outlook. This is Kim speaking on Friday the 15th of June. So looking at Euro dollar and well, what happened? Um, the pivotal announcements that were supposed to be made and which were suggested that were going to be very bullish last week, um, well they were made but in such a, te such a mode uh, that uh, the Euro uh, dropped its biggest day for, well as far as I can see on this chart, so this year. <laughs> Um, at its worst day for this year and probably for some time. Now, um, so what happened briefly uh, was that um, it's agreed that the tapering would offend uh, Trump. Uh, Trump, I got Trump in there as well. Let's blame Trump for it. That may be easier. But the tapering um, came is going to come to an end in December. Uh, so they've got a final date for that at the moment. Um, they've reduced it to half. Um, but there's no interest rates in uh, increases in the first half of that next year, so uh, that didn't bode particularly well. And whatever else didn't bode too well was uh, they reforecast growth down for this year and inflation slightly up, and that's not really the mixture you want to be seeing. So um, it's a very uh, sensitive little old. Uh, uh, I say uh, announcement that was made there that in fact uh, they probably didn't want to do anything at all after all their bolshiness of the, the week before so let's see uh, where we where we go from the, here with the euro huge uh, bearish engulfing day which is normally a suggestion of further downside now it's as it was such a big a big day yesterday maybe we could see a bit of a bounce and then it well, certainly will be an inside day. It, won't, it would never be, well, it won't be quite an inside day because we've already broken the lows there. But there is a chance we could pull back at least to the 60.21s. Um, I think the daily pivot's a big ask, uh, but uh, if it gets back to the 60.21s, I may be looking to short it at that point. We'll see how the price action, uh, what actually happens at the time. It is, as I say, it's one of those days that, well, boom, it's happened. Um, and the, the, the market's um, effectively done the selling immediately almost. Um, but uh, it's uh, what's going to happen, as I say, is there's the potential for, it to, for a short term rally. And then we'll see if it uh, rolls again. Uh, but things may change after a nine o'clock, often do. So we may just sit, sell off straight away, in which case I might be left alone, left behind a little bit. So I would rather, if I'm selling it, want it. I want a bit more of a retrace. Cable pretty much followed suit yesterday. Um, it uh, didn't do too bad for a long time, and certainly it's not quite its biggest day by any means. But uh, it did follow suit. It wasn't the best of news, and we're fo uh, continuing to the downside at the moment. It's uh, just just moved down. I mean, for a large part of that movement yesterday, it held pretty well. It hadn't even closed below the previous day. But uh, or moved below the previous day, but eventually it did, and uh, off it trickled down further. Um, it, cable to me has always got the biggest risk with all the Brexit talk and chatter going going on. Uh, it's got the, as I say, biggest risk. But at the moment, it well, may may stall a little bit here, and likewise, um, to short it, I'd like it a reasonable retrace to be shorting into, um, or maybe a consolidation, and we may get a sort of flat bottom or something like that to see if we can get a breakout from. But uh, as with the euro, but otherwise, it's going to be waiting for a bit of a retrace. If I'm going to short it, it may be a cheeky long and either of these um, this morning back to those 21s. We'll see how uh, price shapes up, but for now, um, we'll have to sit and wait on those. Isn't there? Certainly, no near term entry for me. Um, Dolly yen, well, quite a composed day relatively, as probably expected. There has no real effect um, on the yen yesterday, but it did give up some more and as, as is pushing up, uh, uh, broken the, those prior highs now. The, the higher lows continue, and it looks like, well, it's got potential to push up at the moment towards its month, uh, weekly R3 there. Uh, looking at the dailies, it's um, how far away is it? It's that's ele one eleven thirty nine is possible. I would look, need to look at the options. There may be some option um, action that may slow it and hold it down for a lot of the day. We've seen this each day until later in the day when it starts sort of uh, uh, pitching off. Uh, well, it's actually six o'clock this morning. It's pitched off. Maybe it was not there, but it was. It was sort of a bit later when it really got going properly we as after after that three o'clock movement uh, we saw it uh, 
um, push continue continue upwards. So I'll just need to watch the options later. Um, Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar, well that sold off too. Um, just followed the lead. It's um, not really giving me much, uh, much in a way clue or much in a way chart here at the moment. But the same potential here, I guess, in terms of the um, move back to the 6021s and um, daily pivots may may get some sort of draw towards those sort of levels. So would we'll look towards those levels uh, potentially. Um, the, the Distance isn't quite so far on these, but uh, on this than the, the pound, the euro. But um, th there is the potential uh, if you're looking for shorts to play off those. Um, but uh, for now, there's a bit of divergence across the lows here, um, as with the others, and which may create a bit of a bounce. Canadian dollar, pretty much the uh, inverse, which we would expect. It has, uh, I mean, it pushed up quite solidly yesterday. It's made a new uh, near-term high for sure. Or oh, I say near-term, it's made a new year annual high here, um, pushing through that 131 area. Uh, looking at the four alleys, it was a uh, again. It sort of started moving that mid midday session. Well, it actually started mi moving at eight o'clock. Actually, I'm just looking through here. It just really ran ran and ran and ran um, again potential for it to it's got the divergence double divergence across the top there got the potential to get back to the 21 so it's a similar picture right away across the board here it's just uh, which one's the safest and which one's got any um, potential actually getting properly back to the 21s um, difficult morning from that perspective uh, we'll have to just see how they shape up um, I don't really trust it. It may just be one of those days that it doesn't actually pull back too far and off it goes again and uh, same with the others. So uh, looking at news for today, there's there's little to be had. Monetary policy is already out for the yen. Um, there's there's little else now. Oh, there's a Bank, uh, uh, Bank of Japan press conference. It should, it should have been, well, it's happening at 7.28, so that must be done. Um, aside of that, a uh, euro final CPI is a very soft figure at 10 o'clock. Um, Canadian figures coming through at 1.30, nothing there significant at all. Uh, may create a little volatility for the CAD, but nothing much. Um, and US uh, capacity utilization and industrial production, well, maybe get a, tw uh, a, a bit. We saw very little last month off those figures, and we've seen very little of late from those. So, quite a quiet day on the news front. So uh, unless we hear any rhetoric from Trump or anyone else, um, it's expected that uh, the Trump administration um, are going to uh, bang the uh, pretty significant action on tariffs against China. Um, expected to affect 50 billion in Chinese products today. So there we go. That could uh, create a nice atmosphere out there. Have a great day. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.